Let's continue our discussion on Doppler spectral analysis. As you saw in the previous segment, the time domain data is converted to frequency domain. For a 10 millisecond time segment, we convert that into approximately 100 data points per spectra as indicated in this plot below. Now for each spectra, there are various gradation of signal covering a range of frequencies. These frequencies, or velocities, are separated into bins. In this case, they're separated into bins with intervals of 5 centimeters per second. For example, the 20 to 25 centimeters per second bin only has three data points. As you go up, the 35 to 40 centimeters per second bin turns out to have the highest number of counts. In effect, it will have the, the most hyper echogenic uh, signal intensity out of all of these bins. And this will tell you the various modes of the spectra versus time, whether it be the mean, the peak, or the mode, which we'll discuss in more detail in subsequent sections. Now let's do a question. Based on the Doppler equation, which of the following decreases the Doppler shift? Is it A, by increasing the Doppler angle? Is it B, heat up the vessel to increase the blood flow velocity? Is it C, increase the transducer frequency? Or is it D, decrease the transducer frequency? You may pause the video to consider your response. Think about the Doppler equation. The correct answer is D, by decreasing the transducer frequency. As you can see from the Doppler equation, the Doppler shift is proportional to the velocity and also proportional to the transducer frequency. Practically speaking, by decreasing transducer frequency, you decrease the Doppler shift. There are five aspects of Doppler spectral analysis that I'd like to discuss in this segment. They include axial resolution, range gate control, Doppler gain, duplex control, and Doppler angle control. Let's talk about axial resolution. Specifically, how do you modulate or control the axial resolution? Note from previous uh, discussions that the control of axial resolution can be achieved by varying the pulse duration, also as a pulse length. In normal B mode measurement, typically use between three to five pulses to uh, initiate the transducer uh, signal. However, in Doppler uh, measurement, you typically need between 20 to 30 pulses. Recall that pulse duration determines axial resolution. Therefore, if you plug in the equation for pulse duration, which is the number of pulses divided by frequency, you can get the axial resolution, which is in turn is 1 half times the speed of sound times pulse duration. Recall also that pulse duration decreases as transducer frequency increases. In addition, if you increase the number of pulses, you also can increase pulse duration. So let's do an example. For Doppler measurement, if the frequency of the transducer is 4 MHz and you have 20 pulses, calculate PD and axial resolution. The pulse duration in microseconds equals 20 divided by 4, which is the megahertz. You have 5 microseconds. The axial resolution, therefore, is 1 half times the velocity of sound in tissue, which is 1540 meters per second, times 5 microseconds. And you end up with 0.38 centimeters. Now for most systems, you really can't control number of pulses, but you can control the frequency. Therefore, in terms of nobology, you have to just adjust the frequency during Doppler mode to improve the uh, axial resolution. Now let's move on to range gate control. In pulse Doppler system, you have the advantage of specifying the sample volume of interest where you want to receive the Doppler signal. Specifically, the sample volume is determined by the spatial pulse length, the beam width, as well as gate size. We'll demonstrate this in the next set of diagrams. As you recall, the, uh, our prototype uh, transducer creates a uh, transducer beam, which is uh, emanating from the transducer towards the soft tissue of interest. Now the sample volume is depicted between these uh, two cross sections of the beam width, and specifically, the sample volume has a longitudinal or axial component which is a function, uh, or axial length as a function of both the uh, pulse duration as well as the, uh, the gate size. Now the um, other dimension, which is the uh, X or Y, depending on how you uh, want to describe it, is characterized by the beam width, which as you recall from earlier discussions, is a function of beam frequency, aperture, and the transducer design. Let's look at some examples of the gate size and its effect on the Doppler spectrum. For the optimal range gate size, as you see for the brachial artery example, see that the uh, range gate is located squarely within the brachial uh, artery of uh, the vessel. 
As a result, uh, for a, a gain which is around 16, which is optimal, you get a 1D spectra which has a, a good spectral window, which is the black area underneath the peak of the curve. Now what happens when the gate size is too large? In this case, you see that the, uh, the range gate is larger than the vessel of interest. And as you expect, if you're covering the, uh, the soft tissue around the vessel, that you're going to have a lot of fill-in of your spectra. In other words, spectral broadening. One cause of spectral broadening in this case is in, uh, too large of a gate size. In terms of nobology, you want to be operating in Doppler mode. You want to activate the soft key, which in this case is on the upper left, which is the, uh, the gate size. And by varying the pointer in most systems, and hitting the select button after you have the, uh, the optimal size of your gate, then you have uh, finished controlling the gate range size. Now by decreasing the gate size, you can decrease the uh, occurrence of spectral broadening. Now let's move on to talk about Doppler gain control. Now what happens when the gain is too large? As you can tell from this breakout audio example, there's a lot of background noise when the gain is too excessive, as well as uh, you're, you have some degree of uh, spectral broadening as a result of this uh, excessive gain. Now in this case the gain is over 30, which uh, depending on the system might be too large, might be too small, but in this case it's too large. And as I mentioned before, it leads to excess gain, which makes the interpretation of the 1D spectra less uh, secure. Now what happens if the gain is too small? Now in this case, uh, the gain is only 2, and as you expect, the, uh, the signal intensity is hard to take to read off, and therefore um, that is also non-optimal. So therefore, by rotating the, the, the knob D, you can optimize the optic gain. Now let's move on to duplex control. What is duplex control? It is the ability to separately control the B mode and D mode uh, transducer frequency. By using a lower Doppler frequency, you can detect Doppler signals to greater depths. And by using a high B mode frequency, you improve the resolution of the stationary structures, which tend to have greater amplitudes anyways. So in this example, again, of the brachial artery, you can tell that it is operating in duplex mode, which is a, a, the aforementioned range gate and 1D spectra. Now specifically on the right-hand side, you might notice, if you zoom in, that the B mode frequency is actually 12 MHz. So this gives you better resolution of the anatomy. Now the Doppler frequency on the other hand is only 5 MHz. Finally, let's talk about Doppler angle control. In the context of uh, Doppler uh, measurement for a vessel, you want to uh, adjust the steering angle by uh, manipulation of the parallelogram. The angle should be made to be less than 60 degrees to avoid significant errors. Uh, by using the heel-toe angling technique, you decrease the steering angle by differential proximal to distal pressure. Now what do you mean by excessive Doppler angle? In this case, again, of the brachial artery, the angle is 72 degrees. It's poor angle, it gives you spectral fill-in, and all around, uh, it gives you very inaccurate velocity measurements as well. Therefore, you want to avoid uh, the situation whenever possible. The heel toe method uh, is basically a technique where you angle the probe such that you avoid 90 degrees of angle of incination. In this case, you have the angle straight on at 90 degrees versus the vessel, which is undesirable. I have a diagram of the uh, heel and toe, which is being flat. The lower leg being the transducer, and then the foot itself is the vessel. Now by angling this transducer such that the pressure is on the proximal end and the uh, distal end is lifted up, you can uh, modulate this angle such that the angle is, goes from 90 to somewhere hopefully less than 60. In effect, the heel toe is lifted, going from heel to toe. As you can see, by employing the heel toe method, you're able to reduce this uh, Doppler angle from 72 to 59 degrees in this instance. And in effect, uh, what you get is a cleaner spectra and more accurate velocity measurements. Now, in terms of nebology, you have to be obviously operating in Doppler mode. You'll be uh, using a soft key to activate the steering angle, the parallelogram, and by adjusting the, uh, the trackball, the pointer, you're able to adjust this angle such that using heel toe method, you're able to decrease the Doppler angle, thereby decreasing spectral fill-in, 
and improves the accuracy of the reflected velocity measurements. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of pulse wave Doppler. We've been singing the praises of pulse wave Doppler, but there must be some disadvantages. One of them is aliasing, which is, uh, is undersampling. We'll discuss that in more detail. Uh, decreases the signal strength due to damping. There is uh, the uh, obvious inaccurate measurement at high velocities. Now what are the causes of spectral broadening or fill in? It could be legitimate or illegitimate. It could be due to anatomic reasons or artifactual reasons. The first one is anatomic real pathology. If you have stenosis, your turbulent flow, you get spectral broadening. On the other hand, if you have excessive Doppler angle, angle that's greater than 60 degrees, uh, then you get this artificial fill-in. And finally, excessive sampling volume due to larger than uh, the desired rate gate, range gate width or transurbene width can also lead to broadened filling.